Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new pick a pile for you guys today. And today we are asking the question, who are you really? Like really deep down inside. And I don't mean like how you put yourself out there on the surface, you know, whatever show you put on for people. Um, maybe you don't put on a show. Maybe you are just like very transparently, authentically you. But, you know, sometimes it's like we can be a chameleon and be one way towards one group of people and a different way towards another group of people. And then there's just like who we really are deep down inside for ourselves, like our relationship that we have with ourselves. And I'm not just talking about like your insecurities or your flaws, your imperfections, um, because at the end of the day, your insecurities and your flaws, your imperfections, they're not you. That's not who you really are. So we're going to dig deep down here and find out who you guys really are, like in your soul, in your spirit. That's what we're asking. That's what we're going to try and find out today. Um, just so you have a little bit of a better sense of self and, you know, this will just help you in everyday life, you know, whether it's interacting with other people or on the job, in relationships, um, you know, just for your own personal growth and well-being. So that's what we're going to look into today. We're going to find out who you really are. So we have three different choices to pick from. I have three different festive fall leaves out for you guys again um for the month of October and I don't know maybe maybe a little bit of November too although I'm sure come November I'm gonna be just like cracking out the Christmas stuff because that's just who I am and that's that's a part of who I am and that's just a part of what I do so be on the lookout you guys my my inner buddy the elf will be coming out as of November 1st so the clock strikes midnight the pumpkins go away and all the Christmas stuff comes out <laughs> anyway um, I get a little Christmas crazy so like I said we have three different piles to pick from here we have um, pile number one is this red leaf this red sparkly leaf pile two is this orange sparkly leaf they all have a little bit of glitter on them and pile three is this yellow sparkly leaf it's the big maple leaf so those are your three choices one two and three timestamps are down below you guys and uh yeah enjoy all the fall stuff while you can because christmas is coming soon and it's gonna get crazy then Oh, and one other little announcement before I launch into the first group. Um, so one week from today is actually my birthday. And, um, you know, COVID kind of prevents a lot of celebrations and things from happening this year. Like everything's been canceled. So I really don't have any big plans for my birthday this year because of that. So... I was thinking of spending my birthday here with you guys, actually, because um, normally I would want to upload a video on a Friday anyway, and I figured maybe I would just come on here and spend my birthday with you guys and actually go live and take some free readings for you guys. So if that is something that you're interested in, if you're interested in popping on with me here uh, next Friday, that's October 9th, um, then let me know and I may go live one week from today on October 9th to celebrate my birthday with you guys and do some fun birthday reads for you guys. Just, you know, have fun, chat, talk, swap stories, and um, yeah, do some free readings for you. So if you guys are interested in that, just let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what time I may do it. I'm on Pacific time, uh, the West Coast, so I'm thinking maybe like early evening, like around 5 o'clock or something, because I don't want to go on too late for my East Coast people. Um, so that's that's all tentative, but 
it's kind of what I'm thinking. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Um, also, let me know like what times are good for you on that day, um, if that does fly well for you. So yeah, that's the other little announcement. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm gonna launch into pile one, the red leaf here, and we're gonna find out who you really are. Hi, pile one. If you chose the red sparkly leaf, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out who you really are deep down inside. All right, we're gonna start off here with the crystal unicorn tarot and see what we find out. We have the two of cups, the 10 of pentacles, the fool, and the sun. All right, you guys, pretty positive start here. Very good energy coming through. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing that I'm getting here with the sun is you guys are literally like sunshine. Like you're just a, a little ball of sunshine, just radiating light all over the place wherever you go. You know, um, the world can be a pretty dark and scary place at times, especially when we're experiencing a year like we have been this year with, you know, COVID and lockdowns and protests and riots and, you know, murder hornets and all kinds of stuff. No toilet paper, you know, crazy year. But it's like you guys are the sun in the middle of chaos. Um, you just, you have this natural warmth about you and this natural ability to just be very comforting and make people feel good. And yeah, it's like when people get around you, they can feel that sunlight, they can feel that just radiating on them. You bring sunlight into other people's worlds. You know, you make people feel warm and feel comfortable. And um, you may be someone also who shines the light on things, I guess you could say, you know, you kind of like expose the truths and what's real. But I don't think you do it in like a harsh way or mean way. I think you do it in a very loving and warm way being the sun that you are. Um, so yeah, you guys are definitely like this happy ball of sunshine, which is pretty cool. Also, with the Fool, I'm picking up that you guys are always down for some kind of adventure because that's what the Fool does. You know, the Fool heads out, they're ready for adventure, they're ready for a new beginning. Um, you know, they don't necessarily always think before they leap kind of a thing, but they're just, you know, down for whatever, you know? So I feel like you guys are very much so the same with this, that, you know, you're, you're ready to throw caution in the, the wind, you're ready to take a risk if it's necessary, and you're ready to go out there and explore and be adventurous and see what's out there. You're not someone who's just going to sit on the sidelines. You're not someone who is, you know, scared to carve their own path out to do their own thing. You know, you would be the kind of person who would be willing to, like, move to a different country or move to a different state or move somewhere that is maybe totally unfamiliar to you and nothing like where you started your life at. Or maybe you're the kind of person who would be, you know, willing to take a career route that maybe your family may not necessarily agree with or they may not necessarily understand it or something. You may be the kind of person who um, breaks ancestral trauma and that kind of thing. You may be a transitional character in your family line where, um, you know, you're breaking, like, negative, toxic, abusive, traumatic stuff that has maybe happened in your family's past simply because you're willing to step out. You're willing to step out and find out and... Even if it does make you look like a fool, it doesn't matter to you because you're just willing to try and to have adventures and do new things. So that's really cool. With the Ten of Pentacles, um, you know, the Ten of Pentacles is usually about 
financial and materialistic abundance you know it's that ultimate fulfillment of having those things and I feel like you know you are someone who um, has a lot of that stability and strength inside of you you have that ten of pentacle type of stability um, that you're a stable person because pentacles are very much so the earth energy so you know despite the fact that you may be willing to go out there and try new things it's not like you're just flighty about things. I don't get that from you guys at all. You're not flighty about it. You do have a really good sense of grounding about you. You do have some, you know, earthy tendencies and you are stable. Like, it's kind of weird. Like I have this mental image. This is gonna make no sense. Maybe it will make sense to at least one person. I don't know, but I kind of have like this mental image where it's like you guys are this tall standing pillar, like this foundational pillar that you know you might see in the middle of a house or something like that because it's helping support the roof and everything else going on. Um, but it's like you guys are this foundational, stable pillar. And at the very top of the pillar is the sunshine that you guys radiate just like coming down on everybody, you know, giving people love and bringing people joy and making people feel good and just like radiating that that warmth and light and, and sunshine onto everybody around you. But it's coming from this stable pillar. So yeah, it's like the sunshine is at the top of it, kind of like a Christmas tree topper or something. And um, you guys yourself are like this stable pillar. So I really feel like, you know, that's, that's really like who you are and how you handle things in the world. And because the Ten of Pentacles is, of course, about materialistic, financial, ultimate fulfillment kind of stuff, I do believe that you know, that makes you guys ultimately very abundant. It does make you guys very successful in terms of um, finances and materialistic possessions and just like having your house in order. Um, even, even if you're not like, you know, living in the fanciest mansion, driving the most expensive car or something like that, the point is you're not living in poverty. Like you're still living a good life. You're still living a blessed life you're still living a life that you want to live. And finally, with the Two of Cups, um, I feel like this is definitely a signal that most likely, and this does not surprise me because a lot of people who come to these readings are these, um, you are most likely in a twin flame, soulmate, divine counterpart kind of situation. When I see the Two of Cups, that's what I usually think of. I think of that partnership, you know, that love partnership between two people. It could also indicate other partnerships as well. It could indicate business partnerships or friendships and that kind of thing. But, you know, a, a lot of people seem to be on that kind of love journey. And most likely this is a huge part of who you are. Um, not to say that your relationship or another person defines you whatsoever because you are your own whole unique person all by yourself. But I do feel like this person's presence and this relationship in your life is a huge part of who you are. And it does influence, you know, how you see the world and how you interact with others. And I feel like this is a healthy and good love as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a part of the thing that is able to help you radiate that sunshine. You probably radiate sunshine on this other person and the love that you receive from this person, um, it gives you more energy to radiate your sunshine onto others. Um, so yeah, I feel like if anything, this partnership here, it's, um, it's a positive fuel in your life. It is a, a positive motivator. It is, um, a muse of sorts. So, um, yeah, really, really good stuff coming through so far. Let's see what the Soul Purpose Oracle from Bridget Rao of Divine Essentials has to say. We have medium loved ones, 
on the other side have messages for you. So most likely you are someone, you know, who has family, friends um, who have passed, who are no longer with us, but you probably have a very strong spiritual, very strong soul connection to them. And um, you're probably more connected to them than you even realize. They may be someone who comes to you in dreams or visions. Um, and even if it's nothing like that, like sometimes you may just sit there and you just may feel their presence kind of a thing. But either way, you're definitely someone who has that intuitive gift where you can have that type of communication and that type of exchange between loved ones who have passed and like, where things are at right now in the present. And especially right now, because we are in October now, Halloween is coming, that veil is pretty thin, so um, really definitely be on the lookout for this right now because it's probably a little bit more prominent than it usually is. We also have free spirit. You are here to enjoy life and to love freely. So um, I feel like this definitely kind of reflects a couple of the tarot cards here, it reflects the fool, number one, because the fool is definitely a free spirit. The fool is someone who has no issues, like I said, going out there and exploring and um, having adventures and that kind of thing. Um, so you definitely have the free spirit of the fool. And if you notice, we have a couple here on the card and um, I mean, I know that this card doesn't specifically say anything about a love connection or anything like that, but it very much so reminds me of the Two of Cups here. And who knows, maybe this is signaling in a way that you and your person will go on adventures and explore the world together. Maybe you and your person, um, yeah, maybe you, you both have those free spirits. Maybe your person is a little bit of a fool as well. And um, you, you guys enjoy doing that together. So um, those two things very much so could go hand in hand. And we have separated. You have steered away from your soul's mission. So um, I feel like what this card is basically saying, because we have a lot of like really other good cards going on here, really good energy happening, I feel like this card is basically just a reminder for you guys that anytime you are feeling pulled or weighted down, anytime um, things are not clicking for you, things are not resonating for you, like anytime you feel like you're doing something maybe out of obligation rather than, you know, this is something that you really feel invested in. I feel like that's a reminder to not do those things because when you're doing something out of obligation, when you're doing something that, you know, your heart really isn't in, um, that it doesn't make you feel free like the fool, um, where instead of feeling all like sunshiny, it, full, it makes you feel down, it pulls you down, it makes you feel kind of dark and depressed. When you start feeling those type of emotions, um, that's a reminder that you are separated from your soul's work, from your soul's mission, and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. So I feel like this is just a reminder of to not do those things. And I feel like you guys know what those things are and I feel like you guys know when that happens. Like, you guys are a pretty intuitive group, especially considering we do have the medium card here. So I feel like you guys are pretty intuitive, and you do pretty much, like, know that. Um, but this is just a reminder. It doesn't mean that you actually are separated from your soul's mission, because I don't think that you are. We have a lot of good things coming through here. But this is just a, just a friendly reminder, I think, and that's it. Okay. So next we're going to look at your Halloween Oracle cards. I'm gonna be using these a lot um, over the next month because this is the time of year to be using them. And we have the Underworld, where all things pause and begin again. Um, so I feel like what this card is basically saying is um, sometimes you guys do need to pause <laughs> and sometimes you need to not 
always be the fool necessarily and jump into things, but there's nothing wrong with just like pausing and taking it easy. I also feel like when you guys pause, like this mediumship thing kind of comes in a little bit clearer, like you're able to kind of um, hear not just from the other side, but you're able to hear, you know, really from God, you're able to hear from the Holy Spirit, you're able to hear that intuition deep down inside. So um, I feel like this card is basically just saying that, yeah, there, there are definitely times where it is good to just pause and take a moment, um, just so you can kind of like gather that and be in the right space for that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting from this card. And then winter, the sacredness of pausing. Well, gee, you guys, we're on a tangent here. Pausing, we got two cards on pausing. So I feel like these, it's funny because my intention for this reading wasn't necessarily to give advice but to just kind of, you know, shed the light here on who you guys are. But I feel like there is a little bit of advice that's kind of coming out of both of these cards together. Um, I kind of get the feeling that it's hard for you guys to pause sometimes, <laughs> um, simply because this fool energy here is pretty strong and the fool just wants to go, wee, just jump into things, let's just do it. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but I think sometimes you guys need to step into this Ten of Pentacles, a little bit more grounding kind of energy that you guys do have. Like, you guys are good at being that, you know, stable pillar, like I said. But um, sometimes you guys do need to pause and reflect. And I feel like taking, taking those beats, taking those moments to just pause is a good thing. Because like I said, it's going to... Um, put you a little bit more in depth in connection with God and what he wants for your life and you can hear him better because the thing is if we're running around if we're busy and we're being all crazy running around with our head cut off like a chicken we can't really hear God very clearly when we're like that um, so I really feel like this is a reminder for you guys if anything you need to really invest in those moments when it's time to pause like you know don't be afraid to take those moments. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking those moments. It doesn't have to be like a huge long pause either, but it's a good thing to do that. We have the veil, the future, which is fu another funny thing because I was literally just saying here, you guys, with the medium card, once again, that the veil is pretty thin right now. The veil is pretty thin in terms of, you know, everything right now spiritually, whether it's the other side or just like God and what he has to say right now and that kind of thing as it is. So I feel like once again, with the veil being as thin as it is, this is a good time to tap into this medium, this mediumship energy and, um, you know, really keep an ear and an eye out for uh, words of advice, input, um, information from your ancestors, from people who have passed, from God. Um, this may even be a reminder that right now, that right now in this moment is a good time to pause, is a good time to, um, yeah, just put things on pause so you can understand what's going on on the other side of the veil for sure you know there could be things that you need to know that may actually pertain to your future because it does say the future there so um yeah i feel like that definitely all fits and then we have the lamp remembrance and with remembrance you know that that almost kind of like reminds me of the past so it's like we have a little bit of the past here and then we have the future here with the veil but I feel like either way, the veil is thin right now, and you have this ability within you naturally, this innate ability within to tap into your intuition and to be able to hear from loved ones that have passed, to hear from God, to hear from Jesus, um, to stop and 
pause for the time being. If I can move these cards, right? There we go. To pause for the time being and reflect. And that way then um, you got mail. through the veil, you will be able to remember things that you may have forgotten. Um, remember maybe important lessons that you have already learned in this lifetime or remember important things in general in this lifetime that maybe you, you just didn't think about, that maybe you just didn't realize. And it could even be remembrance from things from past lives, you know, it could be remembrance to a lot of different things. But either way, it's like, it could even simply just be remembering who you truly are, considering this entire reading is about who are you really. This could simply be like with the thinning of the veil right now, you are remembering who you truly are, who you truly are at your core. So, um, yeah. And then finally, from loving words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. You guys got... Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Matthew 26, 41. All right. So I feel like this card is basically just reminding you guys, um, once again, when you have these moments of frustration, when you have these moments where you feel like obligated to do something, or it just doesn't sit well in your gut, it just doesn't feel right, I feel like that's a reminder to not fall into those traps because, you know, sometimes we can feel tempted to do things that, you know, really aren't right for us. So don't fall into that trap. Otherwise, it's going to separate you from what your true mission is. It's going to separate you from who you really are. And the more you separate yourself from who you really are, the more you're going to have to go back and remember it again. So... Um, but I feel like you guys are on the right track. I do feel like you guys have a pretty good sense of self as it is. You know, these are just like a, a few little reminders to help you guys keep it in check and keep it on the right track and to not, you know, fall off the wagon with that basically. So pretty good overall reading here, you guys. Looks very, very nice. Anyway, that is what I see going on for you guys. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, if it did resonate, please let me know, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Even a simple emoji goes a long way. Also, please leave this video a big thumbs up. That helps me out a lot too. And um, feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. And I just want to thank you guys for checking this video out, hanging out here for a little bit with me today, enjoying this reading. It means a lot to me, way more than you know. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 2. If you chose this orange lovely leaf, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out who you really are deep down inside. All right, we're gonna kick it off here with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And you guys have the Six of Pentacles, Death, Strength, and the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so right off the bat, you guys, with the Six of Pentacles, I am sensing that you guys are very, very generous um, because the Six of Pentacles is all about giving and receiving. Um, as you can tell, this unicorn here, it has like, you know, these two little bowls of food and it's giving these other two unicorns some food and the other unicorns are extremely, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I'm sorry. Hold on. <coughs> oh, sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> oh, if I had known that was coming, I would have waited to start recording until after I sneezed. Anyway, I was going to say, 
Um, these other two unicorns are bowing in um, a very thankful way. Obviously, they're very grateful for this food that the other unicorn has so generously give them, given to them. So I feel like what this card is basically saying, you guys, is you're very generous. You're a very giving person. Um, you're probably very giving with your time, your energy, your money, um, everything, you know, towards people that you love and people that you care about, maybe even towards complete strangers. You know, you may be that person who always pays for the person behind you and the drive through and stuff like that. You know, maybe you volunteer and you like help people out with different things. Um, you know, maybe you've like volunteered at like a homeless shelter or that kind of stuff. Um, maybe you've participated in food drives and those kinds of things. Um, but whatever the case may be, um, you seem to be someone who has a very giving heart and who is always there um, helping people out for sure. So um, that is definitely something that's really cool. So I feel like you guys would be like this unicorn here, the one that's doing the giving. I'm sure you guys are also very thankful as well. Like when people do give to you, I do feel like you're probably someone who's very grateful to others um, when you do receive gifts but I definitely get the the feeling the vibe here that you guys are just really generous givers okay now I know this is kind of weird here to have death it's like okay well how is death like who I am how is death who I am and what does death mean in this um you know whenever I see the death card I always think not only of endings, but I always think of new beginnings because, you know, obviously when something ends, something new begins. Um, so I feel like specifically with the way these cards came out in, in regards to this question, I feel like you guys are really good at transition because ultimately that's what death is. Death is a transition. Um, so whether it's a big change or a little change going on, in your life and around you, I feel like you guys are actually pretty good at it. Um, you may not always feel like you're really good at it, but I think in comparison to a lot of other people, I feel like you guys handle change really well. Um, you guys are kind of like chameleons and you can just kind of, you know, surf your way through it and navigate your way through it where other people may crash and burn through change a lot easier than you would. And the reason why I think you guys are so good at handling it is because you are super strong. You got the strength card. So I feel like that's, you know, a pretty obvious trait to describe here of you guys, but you guys are super strong. You have like just this spirit inside of you to keep going. It's like, it doesn't matter how many times you've been beaten down. It doesn't matter how many times things have gone wrong. You have always been the type of person who is, you know, fall down seven times, stand up eight, you know, and you fall down eight times. Okay, you're going to stand up nine. So I feel like that's the kind of person that you guys are. And I feel like you guys have a really, really close solid relationship with God because let's be honest the only way that you're going to have that kind of strength is for it to come out of something bigger than yourself because we are just mere human beings we are just mere mortals here on this earth you know it is not up to any of us to be just like oh yeah I'm so big and bad I've got this all figured out and I feel like you know that like you know that you don't have it all figured out in your broken human frailness but I feel like you know that God does know it that he has it together so you put all of your faith and all of your reliance on him and therefore he's able to fuel you with this kind of strength and therefore able to have you move like liquid basically when changes do occur when you have to transition from one thing in life to the other so um yeah, that is that is definitely pretty awesome, you guys. Um, a lot of people don't have that kind of stamina. So what you have here with this combination is definitely very, very rare. Um, 
And with the Page of Pentacles, I feel like that kind of actually links in a little bit here with your giving nature here of the Six of Pentacles. Um, because the Page of Pentacles is usually someone who wants to bring along a valuable offer. And I feel like when you are in relationships or when you're on the job or when you've been in school working on projects or whatever it is that you're doing, um, you're always wanting to bring your A game. You're always willing to, you're always wanting to bring the best. Um, you don't half-ass your way through stuff is basically what I'm saying. So, you know, when you're friends with somebody, like you're friends with them, you're like, yeah, you know, I'm your ride or die, you know, like, let's hang out, let's go have fun. If someone hurts you and you get upset, I'm going to be there for you, you know, to support you. And, you know, I'm going to go beat that person up because they just made you upset and everything. Um, you know, you're the kind of person when you're on the job and, you know, like, let's say, I don't know. What can I use here as a good example? Um, like, let's say you have to go and make deliveries. I don't even know why I'm saying this. <laughs> deliveries. Let's go deliveries. Let's say you have to go and make some deliveries somewhere and you have to make three deliveries within two hours. Well, you're the kind of person who's going to go the extra mile and you make five of them instead of three. So just, just an example. You know, you guys are kind of like an overachiever, I guess you could say, that may get you in trouble in some ways if you're a little, a little out of balance with this. But I think your intentions are ultimately good at the end of the day. But you're always willing to bring a very valuable offer. And, you know, that valuable offer definitely comes through when you want to give to others, when you want to bless others, and you just want to love up upon other people. So um, that is definitely really 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 cool um from the soul purpose oracle by bridget rao of divine essentials you guys got seed planter plant seeds of potential every place you go and each person's soul harvesting growth what i just say you guys i feel like and it's so funny because with pile one this happened a lot too I would, you know, pull these oracle cards and the oracle cards always reflected what was happening here of what came out first with the tarot. Shadow? Shh. Um, anyway, so yeah, with the seed planner, um, I feel like that very much so reflects the six... Can you stop? No. I'm sorry. My dog is getting a little uh, extracurricular with his mouth right now. No. Stop it. Quiet. I'm trying to do a reading here for the people. Okay? Okay. Sorry about that. He was getting a little crazy. Somebody was in the hallway, so, you know, he had to have an opinion about it, apparently. Um, anyway, though, with the, with the seed planner, I feel like that is a total reflection of the Six of Pentacles because the Six of Pentacles is all about that giving nature as I was talking about. And when you are giving to others, you're planting seeds. You're planting seeds of potential into other people's lives. You know, whether it's by money or whether it's by material goods or whether it's by words of, of encouragement, words of affirmation and love. Um, the bottom line is you're planting seeds of potential in them. And when you do that, um, you know, you're helping them. You're helping boost up and lift up and encourage other people. So um, I feel like this is just a confirmation of that natural giving ability inside of you that just is there innately. We also have automatic writing channel through writing decode frequency deliver messages and teachings from spirit so you may be someone who is a little bit of a writer um you know so i would definitely crack out a pen and paper and see what comes out 
or, you know, it, it doesn't have to be just like, you know, sitting down with a pen and paper or whatever, you know, there's so many ways that writing can come out, you know, maybe you're someone who likes to write poems or short stories, maybe you have a book on the inside of you and you just need to like sit down at your computer and pull up a Word document and start cranking that story out. Maybe you're someone like me who has a blog, or maybe you need to start a blog. Um, there's so many blogs out there and so many, so many different kinds of blogs out there. So you could have, oh, I want to yawn. I'm sorry. I'm like sneezing and yawning during your guys' reading. I don't know what is wrong with me. And my dog is barking like crazy. Don't know what's happening here. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah. I was saying you guys may have like this inner blogger inside of you and one other perspective to look at is even songwriting and I know it doesn't necessarily specifically say anything about music but lyrics lyrics can be such a huge part of what makes a song you know look at Taylor Swift for example what is one of the reasons why she is so popular is because every time she breaks up with a guy, people know that there's gonna be a song about it. People know that she's gonna be writing about it. I mean, yes, you know, you can have a good melody, you can have a good beat to it or whatever, you can have a good track, you can have good producers and composers and all the other kind of stuff, but the lyrics is like the heart of that song. It's what you're, you know, ultimately trying to express. Um, so it could even be in the form of music. But either way, regardless of how the composition comes out, book, music, blogs, poems, short stories, whatever, just write. You definitely have like this writer inside of you who wants to come out. Then we have aromatherapist. Remedy illness and broken hearts attract abundance and fresh starts. So um, aside from being a bit of a writer, you guys may actually have a little bit of, um, I, I, I almost want to say like kind of like a healer in a sense, because when I think of like essential oils and perfumes and fragrances, you know, I think about how just like the smell of something can be very comforting, it can be very soothing, it can be very therapeutic and healing, you know, like right here, right now, I have my two Bath and Body Works candles lit, and these are like my two fall um, Bath and Body Works fragrances. I have Vampire Blood over here, um, which is for Halloween, and it's got like a, a strawberry kind of a tone to it. And um, then over here, the uh, leaves are in the way, I have pumpkin pecan waffles um, for fall, which for me at least, I don't know, I, I have an issue here. I love the candles that smell like food, like you just want to eat them. I don't know why I'm always like that. Like, I know they have like the other scents like leaves or sweater weather, you know, those kinds of things. But I love the ones that's like, oh, I want to eat it. That's just me. But, you know, even me maybe making candles, like I think of like aromatherapists and I think of smells and that kind of thing. Maybe making candles would be right up your alley. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But you may have like this inner creator inside of you when it comes to fragrances and like body sprays and essential oils, diffusers, candles, that kind of thing. So you have a couple different options here between writing and this, and maybe you can, can combine those things and do both. Um, but either way, you guys have a lot of uh, really cool, interesting, unique talents inside of you. Um, maybe you're already aware of some of these, but if you're not, like definitely tap into them because you guys have a lot of good stuff to offer. All right, so moving on to the Halloween Oracle, since it is October, I'm going to be using these cards a lot this month. We have Scrying, Intuition. So um, I feel like this is going to be a big theme really for all three groups because in group one, intuition came out a lot. 
group two intuition is coming out a lot. I'm sure it's going to come out in group three as well, just because I feel like I have a pretty intuitive bunch of people who listen to my readings. And usually people who listen to readings already naturally have a very intuitive gift on the inside, even if it's not fully tapped into yet. You know, it's something that you have to develop. You know, the more the more you listen to God, the more you tap in, the better you get at that kind of a thing. But you definitely have that ability inside of you guys um, to tap into your intuition. I feel like your intuition is pretty strong. It's always active. It's always there. You know, it's always at your disposal for you to listen to. It's just a matter of whether or not you have your spiritual ears turned on or turned off. Because, you know, we have the choice to turn it on or turn it off, so... Um, yes. We have eternal love. Love is love is love and transcends physical death. So, um, similar to pile one, because I had mentioned this in pile one, when I, when I see this card, especially, um, in the Halloween deck, when I, when I see eternal love, I automatically kind of think of, you know, the twin flames divine counterpart, soulmate kind of connections, because that is an eternal love. Um, that is something that transcends transcends death. It is something that um, is not just a physical bond. It's not just a soul bond. It's a spiritual bond. You know, it goes deep. Um, you know, you're always going to be connected to that person. You've probably been connected to that person since the beginning of time. And you're going to be connected to that person long after this lifetime, long after you, you guys have both passed and moved on to whatever is next. So um, I do feel like this is an indication that you guys probably have that kind of special connection in your life and that that connection with that person is an asset. You know, it's something that is a blessing to you. It's something that has helped created you to be the person that you are. It's probably really helped you step into this energy of being a giving person, of being a seed planner, um, you know, especially in those kinds of connections. They're supposed to make you a better version of who you really are. And I feel like for you guys, you know, your eternal love definitely does that for you. You know, this person has really helped you step into who you really are, the best version of yourself. And we have death again, you guys. You got you guys got both death car death cards. The eternal cycle begins here. So that's so funny. Um yeah, we have death and death twice, you guys. So don't get scared. You know, don't get freaked out on me here like, ah, there's too much death. No, I, I think it's a good thing. Once again, you guys, I think you guys are just really good at transitioning. You're really good at rolling with the punches and going through changes because that's what death is. Death is about one thing passing and another thing coming in and coming through and starting a brand new thing. Every time there's death, there's birth. Every time something dies, something new begins. So just remember that. And I feel like you guys are just really, really good at that. You guys are like liquid fluid moving through that. We're like other people may be a bunch of pebbles that can't get all the way through the system to do it or a bunch of chunky rocks or something. You guys are not like that. You guys are just liquid. You just flow right through it. No problem. Um, even, even if you don't think like you are, even if you don't feel like you are the best at doing that, you really are. You guys are pretty amazing with that. And then we have Graveyard, Unnecessary Fear. So I feel like this card is basically just a reminder to you guys um, to not buy into any fears that you do have. You know, don't feed the fears. They don't live here. Um, because you guys have a lot of good things going for you. You know, like I said, you guys are able to transition really easily and go with the flow with changes. You have a very giving heart. You're a seed planner in a lot of people's lives. You guys have this ability to be an amazing writer and to kind of like heal with aromatherapy and, you know, different smells and scents and that kind of thing. You guys are super strong. You guys have 
good offers to bring to the world and are highly intuitive. You guys have this eternal love, this special person in your life who helps you with all these different things, whether they're presently with you or not. Um, so don't let fears get you down because fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not true. That's only going to hinder all this other good stuff that's going on here because this is a lot, a lot of good, good, good stuff. You guys are good. You guys are in good shape. You're in better shape than you think. You're in better shape than you know. So don't let any unnecessary fears ruin that because your fears aren't founded. They're not real. They're not true. Um, all it's going to do is bring you mental anguish and stress that is unnecessary. So just leave it be. All right. And finally, from loving words from Jesus, because at least in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. You guys got nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 17 20. So this is just a beautiful verse. I think a lovely reminder, you guys, to just um, keep holding on to faith. Don't, don't buy into these silly fears because they are not valid. Um, and just remember that anything and everything is possible. 100% and that, you know, God is on your side. He has you in the palm of, of his hand. He is not going to let you take on more than you can handle. So yeah, that's what I see going on for you guys. Overall, pretty good reading here. Um, if this message did not flow for you guys, of course, just to let it go. But if it did resonate, if it did make sense for you, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, even if it's just with a simple emoji. Also, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. Otherwise, I am just so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop by and spend a little bit of time here with me today, even through my sneezing, my yawning, and my dog barking. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. It didn't happen in the other pile, so I don't know what's going on with me. Um, but yeah, I'm just grateful that you guys decided to stop by and hang out with me for a bit here. Um, otherwise, yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day keep sparkling. I'm sending you guys lots of hugs and much love. Hi Pile 3. If you chose this lovely yellow golden type of maple leaf that is very sparkly, then this is going to be the reading for you and we are going to find out who you really are deep down inside. All right, so we're going to kick things off here with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. The past couple of piles were very exciting and super cool. Um, different, each of them were different, but each of them were really good. So I'm excited to see what comes through for you guys. We have the Emperor, the Knight of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. All right, you guys. So, first thing I'm picking up on, if I can move my leaves out of my way. I got all my fall decorations out here and got crazy leaves everywhere. All right, so the first thing I'm picking up dealing with you guys here with the Emperor is you guys are like the king, I guess you could say. Or, you know, maybe the queen, I guess you, you could also say. But you guys are definitely the king. Um, you know, the emperor, he is the embodiment of all the kings. You know, he has got it going on. Um, he's stable. He's secure. He's, he, he's just, yeah, he is the go-to guy is what it comes down to. So I feel like this is very much how you guys come across. Even if you are female and you'd be like, well, shouldn't I be the empress, you know, as opposed to the emperor? But um, if you're a female and you're getting the emperor, I feel like basically this is saying that you're someone, I don't want to say that you're intimidating. Um, that's the wrong choice of words. But I feel like um, 
you're basically a girl who can slay is what it comes down to. Um, you're probably someone who would thrive and do very well in terms of your career, in terms of business, um, because the emperor, he's very masculine. So even if you are a girl, um, you're probably someone who's pretty comfortable in your masculine energy. You're probably someone who is um, a go-getter and gets things done and has no problem, you know, like being the entrepreneur and um, climbing up the ladder in terms of your career, making money, being secure, and all the other kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's definitely what I'm picking up here with the Emperor is you're someone who who may be a little bit more masculine in some things, but simply just because you're, you're a go-getter, you take control of your own life, you get things done, you don't just sit, sit around. Um, but you're also like highly respected at the same time. Like People highly respect you and they put you in high regard. You know, they see you as someone who is definitely qualified. They see you as someone who would be the person to go to for advice or for help or for assistance and those kinds of things. Um, they see you as someone who's an authority figure, basically, in whatever it is that they're seeking your assistance on. So, um, yeah. So definitely, like, that embodiment of all the kings kind of energy. With the Knight of Wands, um, the Knight of Wands is usually, like the knight that wants to come in with like this passionate offer but may not necessarily always stick around because you know the the wands are all about fire they're all about heat they're all about passion so i feel like a lot of times when you guys get started in something new whether it's a new job or a new relationship or a new chapter in your life whatever it may be you guys get very easily excited about it. You guys are super passionate about it, super fiery about it. Like you have no problem just like charging in there and being like, yeah, I'm going to start this new job or yeah, I just got a boyfriend or yeah, I just moved into this new place or whatever it is. Like you guys are just super fiery about it, super passionate about it, just boom. But as opposed to the night of wands who usually would kind of be just like here today gone tomorrow where that fire kind of just fizzles out I don't think that you guys do and here's why after the knight of wands you guys have the eight of pentacles and you know pentacles is a whole different ball game it's a totally different energy than those wands you know those wands are all about the fire they're all about the passion but the pentacles is all about the hard work the pentacles is that earthy energy that stable energy and the thing is like once you guys settle into whatever the new thing is that you're starting whatever the the new chapter new relationship new job whatever it is um once you guys do get into the flow of it you don't just fizzle out on it you guys work hard because that's what the eight of pentacles is all about the eight of pentacles is all about hard work diligence persistence um you know putting in what is required in order to make it work so I feel like once you guys go, you know, you've gotten through that exciting stage, like look at it like a relationship. You know, it's like when you enter a new relationship, everything can feel really like hot and fiery here, like the Knight of Wands. It can feel like brand new and exciting. And, you know, you're just all about that person and that person's all about you. And it's like nothing else in the world matters. But then it's like, after you've been together for a certain amount of time, after you have been around each other and you're no longer like worried about, you know, having your hair and your makeup and everything else perfect and just right. And maybe you're at that stage of the relationship where it's like, now it's like, eh, I don't care. I'm just going to be in my sweats and I don't really feel like shaving. <laughs> you know, once you get into like that phase of the relationship, that's when you get into that hard work phase um but it's a labor of love because you do still love that person or you do still love that job or whatever it is um it's a labor of love but you do put in that hard work and you do put in that effort for sure um 
So that's kind of what I see here with the Eight of Pentacles. And kind of to piggy piggyback on that here with the Six of Swords, um, the Six of Swords is, it's kind of like putting in work and going towards a destination, but it's a little bit different from the Eight of Pentacles here. So um, with the Six of Six of Swords, you know, we have these two unicorns sitting here in the boat and they're taking a little journey across this water here. And this other unicorn in the back, oh my gosh, that was yawning during your reading. I yawned in group two, now I'm yawning in group three. I was fine through group one. I don't know what is up with me. I don't even feel tired, so I don't even know why I'm yawning. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but anyway, this unicorn here in the back is, you know, has the paddle here. It's helping, you know, get these other two unicorns across the water on the other side. So um, I feel like basically what this card is saying is there's a time to work hard. There's a time to work hard at your relationship or your job or whatever it is that you're invested in and you're doing. And there's also a time to just go with the flow and sit in the boat, enjoy the ride, and let God carry you on the other side. Because I really see this unicorn here, the one who is doing the paddling, I see that unicorn as being God. And these two unicorns would, you know, represent like you and your person or you and your job or you and whatever it is that you're dealing with. Um, so sometimes, yes, we do need to we do need to do our part you know it's it's like the bible verse about um you know we do our part he does his part kind of a thing so yes you do need to do your part but not everything is about doing things onto works um you know th they talk about this a lot in the bible like um there's there's works of the flesh and then there's you know the spirit at the same time so the thing is is like yes you do need to do certain works there is work that needs to be put in but there gets to be a certain point where it's like you have to allow faith to step in and faith is this boat that is helping you get to the other side kind of a thing so I feel like you guys ultimately are good at combining the two of these because there are times in your life where you know and you realize that you have to just like go with the flow, sit in the boat, let God take the wheel, direct things and lead things and take things to where you need to go. And then there are other times where you know you do need to put your, your foot down and put the pedal to the metal, so to speak, and that you do need to do some work. So, you know, it's like you and God ultimately working together. You know, sometimes you do the work, sometimes he does the work. Sometimes you do the work, sometimes he does the work. And you just sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. So I feel like you're someone who has a pretty good understanding of that, that you're not too heavy on constantly only working or just constantly sitting around waiting for God to do something for you. So I feel like you're someone who's really good at combining the two of these together. And, you know, this process usually starts after you've gone through the initial, ah, oh, fiery, passionate, ooh, this is a new thing kind of a thing. So, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good thing, you guys. All right, let's see what else we have going on for you with the Soul Purpose Oracle by Bridget Rao of Divine Essentials, and you guys have Potion Maker, herbs and oils, spices boiled, a witch at heart, an easy start. So, um, and it's funny because, you know, I think witches and I think like October and Halloween and kind of the seasons we're in right now, but um, it's funny because Pile 2 came out with I think it was the Aroma Therapist card, which kind of reminds me of this card at the same time. Like both of those cards, to me at least, kind of go hand in hand because I think of like, you know, the aromatherapy 
and fragrances and that kind of thing. And it very much so kind of reminds me of like the potion maker. Um, once again, you know, with working with essential oils and fragrances and that kind of thing. So you may be someone who would be very good at handling that kind of stuff, whether it's like making your own blends of sprays and fragrances or maybe even candles. You know, I had noted this to um, Pile 2 because they had a card that, like I said, was similar to this, reminded me of this. And, you know, I have my two Bath & Body Works candles sitting here for fall right now. I have Vampire Blood over here, which is like a strawberry kind of a scent. And then I have um, Pumpkin Pecan Waffles on the other side. Um, you know, they're both for fall. Just Vampire Blood is more Halloween than fall. But, um, you know, I, I love Bath & Body Works candles. They smell amazing for whatever reason. I really love the ones that smell like food. Like, I know, I, I know that they have other scents, especially for, like, fall right now. Like, they have um, sweater weather and leaves and stuff like that. But I just, I love the ones that smell like you can eat them. I don't know why. I must like to torture myself like that and be just like, I want to eat it, but I can't. <laughs> I don't know. That's just me. But um, you may be someone who, who could do this, who could make candles and you know just make things smell amazing and you know different smells and that kind of thing can be very healing and it can be very calming and it can make you feel good and yeah so that's kind of like what the potion maker card reminds me of you also have star keeper guardian of the galaxy keeper of the stars fire in my veins and fearlessness in my heart which this very much so reminds me of the Knight of Wands energy. And I love this because in every single group, um, the Oracle cards have very much so reflected and echoed what has already come out in the tarot. So, I mean, it's just, it's confirmation to me that this is definitely on the right track. Um, but yeah, the, the fieriness of this card reminds me of the Knight of Wands coming in with that fire and that passion of, you know, the things that you guys care about, the things that excites you guys and that kind of thing. So yeah, this is just confirmation of more of that fire, more of that passion. Who knows? Maybe you guys are, are fire signs or you have a lot of fire possibly in your birth chart. So um, it could be confirmation of that as well. And we have Earth Keeper, so maybe you got some Earth stuff going on in your birth chart, or maybe you're an Earth sign on the flip side. Um, you have been sent to protect Mother Earth. So I do feel like this card is basically saying that you guys are very grounding, um, despite the fact that you do have this fiery energy inside of you guys. You guys are good at being very, very grounding. And you would kind of have to be being the emperor. You know, the emperor just doesn't do things haphazardly, always being in that fiery, passionate energy. You know, the emperor does have a very grounding energy. The emperor does have a very stable way of living life. So, um, you know, I feel like that just basically confirms that, you guys, that um, you do, you kind of have like this crazy combination of fire and earth. Who knows? Maybe you're a volcano. Maybe that's what this is saying. You're a volcano. That's a little bit of earth and that's a little bit of fire. So, um, yeah, if that makes any kind of sense, you're, you're a volcano. Um, it's up to you whether you want to be the crazy eruptive kind, I think, like Mount St. Helens that's crazy destructive, or maybe you want to be the more slow, free flowing kind like Kilauea or I think that's the name of it, K Kilauea in um, Hawaii. But um, anyway, yeah, so you guys definitely have this earthy, stable quality about you. All right, moving on to the Halloween Oracle, because um, I'm going to be using these cards a lot over the next month because it is October. It just makes the most sense. Oh, gosh, whenever this card comes out, I'm always apologizing because I can never pronounce it right. <laughs> 
So I am sorry if I can't say it right to any of my Spanish speaking friends here, but you guys have Lady Del Lady De los Mor Mor Mortros. I don't know. I can never say it right. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Um, acceptance and equality. That's the point here. Acceptance and equality. So I feel like you're someone who is very accepting very um yeah very accepting of one another and it's funny because when i think of equality um i think of how a lot of things in our world right now is not very equal you know you see everything that's been going down this year with riots and protests and you know things like black lives matter or the um or the, you know, gay community and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I feel like you're someone who loves them all, you know, whether it's um, the black community, the gay community, um, the immigrants who come from other countries, you know, just anyone who is not, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like anyone who is not, um, I don't know, I guess, of the upper crust or whatever, like the underdog. Like, I feel like you guys love the underdog. Like, you guys have a huge heart for the underdog, and you guys, um, you guys love and accept everyone. Like, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter um, what color of your skin you are, what your sexual orientation is. Um, whether you're male or female or identify as something else, like I feel like you guys just love and accept everybody. Um, so yeah, like I feel like you guys really understand the importance of equality. I feel like you guys really understand the importance of just loving and accepting people for who they are and where they're at, even if who they are and where they're at is completely different from you. And that's a beautiful quality to have. We also have ancestors, the love and legacy of our DNA. So I feel like this card is basically reminding you guys that you have family members on the other side who love you, family members who um, want to see you thrive, and just live your best life, basically. Um, so yeah, you may not even realize that, but I feel like that's definitely what this card is saying is that you do have like a team of support on the other side, you know, like a, a spiritual team. You may not be able to see them all the time. You may not be able to feel them all the time, but they are definitely there. They have your back. Vampire. Emotional intelligence. Okay, so the good news is this card is not actually about being an emotional vampire because I know sometimes we can automatically go there and just think oh you're like an emotional vampire you're sucking me dry and you're being toxic that's not what this is about I feel like especially with the key words here being emotional intelligence I feel like that's what you guys are you guys are very emotionally intelligent which makes sense because if you have this very accepting nature about you and you accept people of, you know, all walks of life, all sizes, all shapes, all colors, you know, all the other kind of stuff. You're able to do that because you have a high level of intelligence. You know, someone who is not very emotionally adept, I guess you could say, um, is probably going to be a lot more close-minded, is probably going to be a lot more judgmental. They're probably going to be someone who wants to surround themselves only with people that they are comfortable with, only with people who kind of look like them, talk like them, act like them, think like them. But you guys aren't like that. Like you guys are willing to embrace differences. You guys are willing to embrace like different cultures and different ideas and that kind of thing. And the only reason why you're able to do that is because you have a high level of emotional intelligence. And we have Skull of Stars, Infinite Possibilities. So also, once again, because you guys have this high level of intelligence, you guys are able to see the infinite possibilities. You know, where other people may see roadblocks and walls 
and problems, you guys see opportunities. You guys see um, all the possibilities. You know, when somebody else sees the glass half empty, you see it half full. When somebody else, you know, sees everything that goes wrong, you see how everything could go right. So um, that's definitely a beautiful way to look at the world, a beautiful way to um, go about solving problems and um, living life ultimately. So you guys are definitely able to tap into that and see the infinite possibilities that are out there. And finally, last but not least, you guys, we have a card from Loving Words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. So let's see what Jesus has to say to you guys. And you guys got, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 10, 11. So I feel like what this card is basically saying is just a reminder to you that God is with you. You are never alone. And, you know, basically we are his sheep. You know, he takes care of us. So even if you have times in your life where you don't feel like you're being taken care of and you feel down and out and you feel like you've just been, you know, kicked to the curb, basically, remember that you're not, that, you know, you are one of God's sheep. He is there to take care of you. You know, he's going to find you. Even if you're lost, he's going to find you. He's going to pick you up. He's going to get you. He's going to bring you back. So he's always there for you no matter what. All right, you guys. Pretty good reading overall. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, I hope that this message made sense for you. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Even just a simple emoji goes a long way. Also, please give this video a big like. That definitely helps me out. A big thumbs up. And um, feel free to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm just so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop by, hang out here with me for a little while. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I'm sending you guys lots of hugs and much love.